When it comes to filling an object in Adobe Illustrator, you know, whatever the object is, with a color, we've looked at solids, haven't we? And we've looked at gradients. But there is something else that we can use, and that would be a pattern. Now I've got a blank document open, just a little sandbox to play in. And let's do this. Let's come over here and pick up our rectangle tool and do a nice beefy rectangle and fill that with a pattern. If we move our swatches over and pull that down, we actually have two defaults. You got this one right here. That's kind of cool. And you've got this one right here, but I would like more. Now we're going to make one. They're actually pretty easy to make. But are there more that I can experiment with? And the answer is yes. If you click this button here for your libraries and go down to Pattern, you've got Basic Graphics, Decorative, and Nature. If we go into, say, Basics, we have dots, lines, and textures. Let's, well, let's look at textures, see what we got. There are quite a few. If I click one over here, you will notice it will, well, it'll change here, but it will also come over here. Let's pick one or two of these up until we find something we kind of like. That's interesting. Let's stop there. Close here. They're over here. Now, if you want to work on one of the pre-existing patterns, all you have to do is go into the Swatches panel and double-click on it. You are now in the Pattern Editor. Now, the Pattern Editor has a button up here. It says Concentric Circles. That's the name of this one. You can get out by clicking here. You can save it as a copy. You can change it and save it here, or you can cancel. Now, let's look at our options. The name, if you want to give it a new name, like Andy's Concentric Circles, whatever. You have a tile type here, Grid brick by row. Um, this is, to me, the most predictable one I like to use is basically just grid. So let's leave that alone. Now what you're looking at over here is important. The stuff, if you will, that's inside of that blue line represents the actual pattern. What's going on out here represents what it looks like when that brick is built and repeated. That's how patterns work. You can dim the copies, turn that back off, and see the pattern again. We can change the width and or the height of that box if we want to try that. We can try sizing the tile to the art. If there is an overlap between the pattern and the bricks as they move down, do you want the overlap going from the top to the bottom, left to right, and from the top to the bottom, up and down, or vice versa? You can show a different set of copies. Let's put that back at 5x5. Five five. That's fine. And we already looked at dimming. Show the tile edge. And show the swatch bounds. Now, in this case, I want to see what would happen if I change the size of the box. Remember, this is where the pattern is. If I come in here, we're at 57.6006. Let's change that to 75. Now, see what it begins doing? Because the pattern actually ends right here. By making the brick bigger, we're forcing the pattern to repeat itself and create these columns, which maybe I like that. Now, if I go into height and do the same thing, well, that's the pattern now. Let's say we like that. Come over here and say save a copy. We'll call it wonky. Click OK. And there it is right there. It's been added to my swatches panel. Now, you can work on pre-existing ones, and that's okay. But how about doing our own? So let's get out of here by clicking this button right here. Now we're back into Adobe Illustrator, and let's get rid of this. Pick up your, well, I'll tell you what, pick up your star tool. I'm going to draw a little tiny star right about there. I think I'm going to do this too. So much easier if you blow the screen up and work. Now, it's got whatever the pattern is in it. We'll worry about that in a minute. Pick up the star tool again, and I'm just going to do a couple of stars. This is my pattern, if you will. And let me move those around a little bit. And let me select this one. Give it a color. I'm just going to do fill colors on these.
And let's do this one too. Make that green or something. How about that? I like it. Now let's get back down to a living size. Pick up your selection tool and select all those pieces. Just like that. Now go up to the word object on the pull down menu. Go down to pattern and say make. Now it's been added automatically over here. Let's click OK. And it's showing us now what it would do if we use the standard pattern. Let's actually call it something like stars. We can make the box bigger if we want to. We can change it around. If you want to turn this off for a second, you see what the pattern is going to look like. Actually, it looks pretty neat, but remember what's happening here. All you're doing is repeating a brick that's got stars on it. But if we come over and say click right on the red one, I still have the ability to change things. Anything I want to do to make that pattern. Now I like it. I'm done. Well, let's go ahead and get rid of these. We don't need them anymore. Pick up, uh, well, the star. Fill it with our pattern. You want to make a change? Double click on it and go through the process again. The new pattern generator, actually it came out in the previous version, is actually pretty cool. It's really changed how we do our patterns. Have some fun.